For a radical economist, the title of today's video is a complete nonsense. Why? Because there's nothing ergonomic about a laptop. Laptop ergonomics is a complete nonsense. But there are things we can do to improve the situation, as we'll discuss now. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, ergonomist, posture therapist, author of the Posture Manual and creator of three online posture programs. Let's first dive into the why there's nothing ergonomic about a laptop. There are two main reasons for that. Reason number one is that a laptop is a mobile device. Therefore, it is a device that you can use everywhere and that you will be tempted to use everywhere, including for useless stuff, such as che checking your social networks. But when you're everywhere, well, you're usually slouching or crossing legs or all that. So let's call it the general posture will be usually worse than when you're on your office chair. That's reason number one. Reason number two is that those of you who have read my book will recognize their rule number two. The neck will never be too relaxed. In other words, you have to do as little as possible with your neck. In terms of office ergonomics, how does this apply? Well, it states that your keyboard should be where your hands are and your screen should be where your eyes are, which gives such a distance between where your hands are and where your eyes are. Well, look at a laptop. This distance is reduced, and it's reduced even further with a tablet or with a smartphone. In other words, if I put the laptop where my hands are comfortable, my eyes will tend to dive in direction of the screen, especially as the font size is small. Or if I put the laptop where my eyes are comfortable, where I have continuous strain in the neck and shoulder area because I need to raise my hands above their comfortable level. If you have understood that, you have understood everything, end of the story. Because basically the two solutions will be what? Solution number one will be improve your sitting posture, which is the topic of many videos on my channel, including those that I list in the description. And topic number two is how can we yeah, break this hinge so as to split the target of the hands from the target of the eyes. Long story short, to sit properly, you need a proper seat, a proper chair. What's the job of a chair? It is to prevent your pelvis from doing that, i.e. it is to stabilize your pelvis. To stabilize the pelvis, what do you need? Well, you need strong pressure under your heels, i.e. your heels firmly on the ground, so that you get a push that will bring your pelvis against the lower part of the backrest. That's your job. And what's the job of the chair? It is to, on the one hand, have a space where your buttocks can fit, and on the other hand, to come forward in such a way that it can hold your belt. So the job of the chair is to fit the butt and hold the belt. And that's it. All the mumbo jumbo that you see on my chair is just accessories, be it the armrest, be it the headrest, be it the high backrest. It's cool when I want to relax, but it's not necessary for and working sitting posture. So that's how I sit when I'm sitting well. My pelvis is fully supported, my shoulder blades are free. And as a result of that, the crown here is the highest point of my head, which decompresses the neck. You see, if my forehead goes upwards, the neck is compressed. And if my neck bends more than 20 degrees, at some point you will feel that it becomes heavy and sack, which creates a lot of strain on the rear neck muscles and a lot of compression, contraction in the front neck muscles. When your spine is protected, you have respected what's in my book rule number one, yeah? that the back should be flat for every prolonged hazardous or frequent activity. Now let's go to what we discussed a second ago, which was rule number two, i.e. the neck should always be relaxed. It means that your keyboard needs to be here. When your elbows are in a 0 to 20 ang uh, degree angle forward or 0 to 20 degree for um, sideways angle from your torso, well, that's where your keyboard should be. So you see, the keyboard will be at the height of my elbows. For 90% of the Western population, this will be between 68 and 76 centimeters. And as I said, 
I will have the problem with the screen which is too low. Therefore, to improve the ergonomics on a laptop, I need two accessories next to the chair. I need a split keyboard and I need a split mouse. Here I have a vertical mouse, but a normal mouse is already better than nothing. And I will put these two accessories where my hands are, i.e. here. And now I've broken the hinge joint on the laptop, which is between the keyboard and the screen, and I can use this thing as a mere screen. What does it mean? It means that I will put it here. I will put a pile of books underneath. If I have, I can even put a laptop holder, which will hold it like this, but I will put it in such a way that the top of the screen is slightly lower than the level of my eyes, and that the distance is such that I can easily read the font, including at 5 p.m. on Friday, without going there. So here we go. This is cheap laptop ergonomics. I've put two plastic boxes under the laptop. I've tilted the screen in such a way that it illuminates my face. My neck is neither extended nor flexed more than 20 degrees. Keyboard is under my hands. We're all good. But still, the font size remains a bit of a problem, especially if you work a lot on Excel or on CAD, uh, I mean, drawing uh, software and things like this. And in this case, well, what you should do is plug an external screen to your laptop, which you can then close and use as a mere central unit. You have two ways to do this. Either you buy a docking station and you just have one cable to plug onto your laptop, or you plug the screen on the HDMI output and the keyboard mouse either on the USB or uh, on Bluetooth, and that's it, end of the story. When you're in this configuration, you're back to a desktop setup, and therefore the breaks that you need to take are get out of your chair every 30 minutes and take five minutes break every hour. If you work on your laptop just like that, in the way that I don't like, well, you need to divide all these durations by three, i.e. you have to get out of your chair every 10 minutes and you have to take a real break every 20 minutes. You see, if you think that these accessories are expensive, well, count the productivity loss of either respecting my breaks or falling sick by working on a laptop. And you will see that the indirect costs of a bad health is much bigger than the direct cost of the accessories. If you like this content, well, subscribe, like, share, and feel free to ask any question in the comments. I will be happy to either reply or shoot a new video if I don't have anything already on my channel.